Heroes and welcome back to Story Corner. Today we are rejoining Pippi, Tommy, and Annika to see what they're up to. We are on chapter eight and it is called Pippi Entertains Two Burglars. So let's see what happens. After Pippi's performance at the circus, there's not a single person in all the little town who did not know how strong she was. There was even a piece about her in the paper but people who lived in other places, of course, didn't know who Pippi was. One dark autumn evening, two burglars came walking down the road past Villa Villa Coola. They were two bad thieves wandering about the country to see what they could steal. They saw that there was a light on in the windows of Villa Villa Coola and decided to go in and ask for a sandwich. That evening, Pippi had poured out all her gold pieces on the kitchen floor and sat there counting them to be sure she couldn't count very well. But she did it now and then anyways, just to keep everything in order. 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 60, 10, 60, 11, 60, 12, 60, 13, 60, 16. Whew, it makes my throat feel like 60. Goodness, there must be some more numbers in arithmetic. Oh yes, now I remember 104, 100,000. That certainly is a lot of money, said Pippi. There was a loud knock on the door. Walk in or stay out, whatever you choose, shouted Pippi. I never force anyone against their will. The door opened and the two burglars came in. You can imagine that they opened their eyes wide when they saw a little red-headed girl sitting all alone in the floor counting money. Are you all alone at home, they asked craftfully. Of course not, said Pippi. Mr. Nelson is home too. The thieves couldn't very well know that Mr. Nelson was a monkey sleeping in a little green bed with a doll's quilt around his stomach. They thought the man of the house must be named Mr. Nelson, and they winked at each other. We can come back a little later, is what they meant. But to Pippi, they said, we've just come in to ask what your clock is. They were so excited that they had forgotten all about the sandwich. Great strong men who don't know what a clock is, said Pippi. Where in the world were you brought up? The clock is a little round thingamajig that says tick-tack, tick-tack, and that goes and goes, but never gets to the door. Do you know any more riddles? Out with them if you do, said Pippi encouragingly. The burglars thought Pippi was too little to tell time, so without another word, they went out again. I don't demand that you say tack shouted Pippi after them, but you could at least make an effort and say tick. You haven't even as much sense as a clock has, but by all means go in peace, and Pippi went back to her counting. No sooner were the burglars outside than they began to rub their hands with delight. Did you see all that money? Heavenly day, said one of them. Yes, once in a while luck is with us, said the other. And all we need to do is wait until the kid and that Nelson are asleep. Then we'll sneak in and grab the dough. They sat down under an oak tree in the garden to wait. A drizzling rain was falling. They were very hungry, so they were quite uncomfortable. But they thought of all that money and kept their spirits up. From time to time, lights went out in other houses, but in Villa Villa Coola, they shone on. It so happened that Pippi was learning to dance the Shikasta, and she didn't want to go to bed until she was sure she could do it. At last, however, the lights went out in the windows of Villa Villa Coola, too. The burglars waited quite a while until they were sure Mr. Nelson would have gone to sleep. At last, they crept quietly up to the kitchen door and prepared to open it with their burglar tools. Meanwhile, one of them, his name, as a matter of fact, was Bloom, just happened to feel the doorknob. The door was not locked. Well, some people are smart, he whispered to his companion. The door is open. So much the better for us, answered his companion answered his companion, a black-haired man called Thunder Carlson, by those who knew him. Thunder Carlson turned, to, turned on his pocket flashlight, and they crept into the kitchen. There was no one there. In the next room was Pippi's bed, and there also stood Mr. Nelson's little toy doll bed. Thunder Carlson opened the door and looked around carefully. Everything was quiet as he played his flashlight around the room. When the lights touched Pippi's bed, the two burglars were amazed to see nothing but a pair of feet on the pillow. Pippi, as usual, had had her head under the covers at the foot of the bed. That must be the girl, whispered Thunder Carlson to Bloom, and no doubt she sleeps soundly. But where in the world is Nelson, do you suppose? Mr. Nelson, if you please, came Pippi's calm voice from under the covers. Mr. Nelson is in that little green doll bed. The burglars were so startled that they almost rushed out at once. But then it suddenly dawned on them what Pippi had said. 
that Mr. Nelson was lying in a doll's bed. And now, in the light of the flashlight, they could see the little bed and the tiny monkey laying in it. Thunder Carlson couldn't help laughing. Bloom, he said, Mr. Nelson is a monkey. Can you beat that? Well, what did you think he was? Came Pippi's calm voice from under the covers again. A lawnmower? Aren't your mother and father home? Asked Bloom. No, said Pippi. They're gone. Completely gone. Thunder Carlson and Bloom chuckled with delight. Listen, little girl, said Thunder Carlson. Come out so we can talk to you. No, I'm sleeping, said Pippi. It is more, is it more riddles that you want? If so, answer this one. What is it that goes and goes and never gets to the door? Now Bloom went over and pulled the covers off Pippi. Can you dance the Shikasta? asked Pippi, looking at him gravely in the eye. I can. You ask too many questions, said Thunder Carlson. Can we ask a few too? Where, for instance, is the money you had on the floor a little while ago? In the suitcase, on top of the wardrobe, answered Pippi truthfully. Thunder Carlson and Bloom grinned. I hope you don't have anything against our taking it, little friend, said Thunder Carlson. Certainly not, said Pippi. Of course I don't. Whereupon Bloom lifted down the suitcase. I hope you don't have anything against my taking it back, little friend, said Pippi, getting out of bed and stepping over to Bloom. Bloom had no idea how it all happened, but suddenly the suitcase was in Pippi's hands. Here, quit your fooling, said Thunder Carlson angrily. Hand over the suitcase. He took Pippi firmly by the hand and tried to snatch it back. Fooling, fooling, too much fooling, said Pippi, and lifted Thunder Carlson up onto the wardrobe. A moment later, she had Bloom up there, too. Then the burglars were frightened. They began to see that Pippi was no ordinary girl. However, the suitcase tempted them so much that they forgot their fright. Come on now, both together, yelled Thunder Carlson, and then they jumped down from the wardrobe and threw themselves on Pippi, who had the suitcase in her hand. Pippi gave each one a little poke with her finger, and they shrank away into a corner. Before they had a chance to get up again, Pippi had fetched a rope and, quick as a flash, had bound the arms and legs of both burglars. Now they sang a different tune. Please, please, miss, begged Thunder Carlson. Forgive us. We were only joking. Don't hurt us. We are just two burglars who came in to ask for food. Bloom began to cry a bit. Pippi put the suitcase neatly back in the wardrobe. Then she turned to her prisoners. Can either of you dance? Why, yes, said Thunder Carlson. I guess we both can. Oh, what fun, cried Pippi, clapping her hands. Can we dance a little? I've just learned, you know. Well, certainly, by all means, said Thunder Carlson, a bit confused. Pippi took some large scissors and cut the ropes that bound her guest. But we don't have any music, she said in a worried voice. Then she had an idea. Can you blow on a comb, she said to Bloom, and I'll dance with him, she pointed to Thunder Carlson. Oh, yes, Bloom could blow on a comb, all right, and blow he did so that you could hear it all through the house. Mr. Nelson sat up in bed, wide awake, just in time to see Pippi whirling around with Thunder Carlson. She was dead serious and danced as if her life depended on it. At last, Bloom said he, could, he couldn't blow on the comb any longer because it tickled his mouth, unmercifully. And Thunder Carlson, who had tramped the roads all day, began to feel tired. Oh, please, just a little longer, begged Pippi, dancing on, and Bloom and Thunder Carlson could do nothing but continue. At three in the morning, Pippi said, I could keep on dancing until Thursday, but maybe you're tired and hungry. That was exactly what they were, though they hardly dared to say so. Pippi went to the pantry and took out bread and cheese and butter, ham and cold roast and milk, and they sat around the kitchen table, Bloom and Thunder Carlson and Pippi, and ate until they were full. Pippi poured a little milk into her ear. That's good for an earache, she said. Poor thing, have you got an earache? asked Bloom. No, said Pippi, but I might get one. Finally, the two burglars got up, thanked Pippi for the food, and begged to be allowed to say goodbye. It was awful jolly that you came. Do you really have to go so soon, said Pippi regretfully. Never have I seen anyone who can dance the way that you do, she said to Thunder Carlson, and to Bloom. If you keep on practicing on the comb, you won't notice the tickling. There is a picture of Pippi dancing with her guests. As they were going out of the door, Pippi came running after them and gave them each a gold piece. These you have honestly earned, she said. There's a picture of Pippi in her bed. So that's the end of chapter eight. I bet you those burglars had no idea what they were getting themselves into. Chapter nine is called Pippi Goes to a Coffee Party. So we'll see you next time to see what happens. Bye.